morning. So this is the October edition of Coffee and Chat with Kate. And today we have Viv Owen and Agnes Gerlaskus joining me. And I've just spilled coffee. Oh, beauty of going live. Oh, I actually for once have a tissue. Um, <laughs> so yes, we've gone oh, already. The requests are coming. This is amazing. Right, let me get everybody in. Oh. With us, peeps, bear with us. One and Viv, good morning. Good morning. I'm okay. So, Viv, I need you to send me a request. Oh, it looks like it's coming through now. Amazing. Accept that. Good to see you. Long time. I think the last time I saw you in person was Paris, actually. So, um there we yeah. go. Come on, Viv. Let's get you and, in. Um, nice. <laughs> Good morning, Viv, as well. So actually, that was quite seamless. That was just me being a little bit um, cat handed because I spilt coffee just as the request to join came in. So <laughs> I love it. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I was just mentioning to people as well that this is the October edition of Coffee and Chat with Kate. And it is a very relaxed, gentle way of starting a weekend. Um, and today, I just thank you so much for joining. Mm -hmm. Usual format, a few questions from me to you both, um, the same ones, because then you always end up finding some sort of synergy or connectivity. Um, and then you guys get to pose a cur curveball question to me at the end. Sound good? Are you both thank well? You. Yeah, yes, thank yeah. you. Very good. Well. Well, happy <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> Of course. And let's get on with it then. I love it. So, Viv, let's start with you. When did you join ArtCan and why? Um, recently, uh, last summer, yeah. um, I joined and um, I was made aware of you by uh, a lovely artist called Penilla Igstrom, who oh, yeah. I've uh, exhibited with before uh, in various group shows. Um, and... Uh, uh, yeah, to to uh, get some uh, networking and um, a few more ideas outside. I've recently um, moved out of a studio that I was in for twelve years, um, unbelievably. Wow! And I'm, I'm trying to uh, make my way elsewhere, as it were. So that was part of uh, a part of that. Part of the process. And did you, yes. do you, I mean, a lot of people say that they join Art Camp because actually the, the community sort of and the network and the understanding of what is out there and accessible to you as a contemporary artist is much easier if you're doing it with other sort of like minded people as opposed to trying to navigate your own way through things. And was that was that an aspect? Oh, oh definitely. Definitely. Mm. That it's it starts with the artist, I feel. <laughs> yeah. And um, that that's part of what appeals about it oh brilliant well welcome i was aware you were you were quite a newbie to us as well which was great um same question to you please mm -hmm. um so i joined uh, art camp last autumn um 2022 and it was a beautiful synchronicity i love synchronicity <laughs> so that's one of the stories um actually i exhibited with art Khan, uh, previously so uh, i've got a lovely art coach Maika, and she said what art can and they 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 are good so i applied to uh, a call out and i got in yeah. and i had an exhibition with you in uh, vienna and that was um in between us being caught in lockdowns and pandemic so any opportunity to be out there exhibiting meeting other artists mm -hmm. i was obviously very interested and and I actually love the actual uh, exhibition and the community. And then I happened to have my, uh, my own um, duo exhibition with uh, Marek Olszewski last year. And I invited Rita to, to come and see it. I said, oh my goodness, I really love the artwork. And she mentioned, oh, we've got a call out for our outcome uh, membership. I said, all right, I'm definitely applying for that. And I got in. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, like a build up to it but uh, i joined last year and i've been like really active from the very beginning i applied for loads of call outs and 
my my reason for joining was really the community because i think in particular throughout the uh, pandemic times we have worked a lot in isolation and and artists in general i'm generalizing here have that tendency to just like chip away do their work and then like forget about the whole world i've got that tendency as well so i'm just pushing myself out of the box and like communicate with others get inspiration collaborate as well yeah. Uh, yeah. and just use each other's resources i love supporting other artists i'm delighted when i'm just invited to to shows and, and do things together so that was my my uh reason for joining and and i haven't looked back honestly i've made some lovely connections and i think it's only at the beginning of it and growing yeah uh, well the beautiful thing is it's that you know this is our 10 year anniversary year so a lot of amazing groundwork and historical sort of identity of what art can in art can is is so sort of solid now and i think people are really recognizing that so it's just this lovely springboard of whatever the next 10 year is is going to be which is just so exciting oh, can't wait um so Viv, let's go back to you and let's, let's explore a little bit more if you don't mind sharing a bit about your practice, your processes, what your inspirations are. Yes, um, so I, I work from uh, mass media, uh, which started as, um, as, a, as a workaround really, um, for not having a model often enough yeah. and uh, watching television and trying to draw from that. Um, and then hit upon the idea of taking photos from the television um, back when it was all uh, analog, so yeah. <laughs> uh, video cassettes and analog camera, and uh, not knowing what you were going to get when you developed it, uh, and just the from going from being a basic um, way of looking at people, it became a, a way of of uh, of uh, getting a a, a, a a pose that you could never get naturally because yeah. it's it's an instant taken uh, taken from uh, a sequence yeah. of people moving so, so uh, it's a, a um, real moment in time yes yeah very much so yeah. so so the sort of the sketchbook act, uh, kind of process is to is to photograph it and then to crop it and photoshop it and not to i don't alter things i find things is what yeah. I'm, i i described it once as archaeology in reverse I'm, I'm building up layers on top of things rather than taking them away <laughs> um so then a paint free hand from from the result yeah um and uh the idea was to have a, a an unexpected narrative between the disjointed images yeah so i quite like to put them together um, in a sort of video wall effect or a cartoon strip. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Does that then feel like it almost puts it back into the sort of like or like the TV or the or the accessibility of where you've originated the images from? If you are then sort of almost putting them back into that more accessible kind of like yes. cartoon strip or something and do you like that yes. as a whole have, or have, have i totally just jumped in on that or is that is that something that is you like know, that whole journey that's quite interesting for you that that is definitely interesting to me i did do a piece called loop where we did actually um put it back completely into the television so um i got some animators to make a a, a short video um from my paintings where the i, I take i always take a photo do a work in progress for each yeah layer and we um yeah so they were able to build up the image again from the layers yeah. um and that, that closed the loop that, that sounds brilliant and so for anybody who hasn't sort of um discovered your work yet it is primarily figurative yes definitely yeah cool. yes brilliant um, and then observ um, observational drawing um underpins most of it <laughs> yeah and you mentioned the sort of paint free finale so what actually are the materials what is, what is it that you're really sort of what's what's the tangible process uh, well most most of the time I, I do paint in oil paint yeah uh, by observation so i don't um grid up 
an image you'll print out an image to work I, I work from it by eye and that's where yeah, I feel yeah, that yeah. all my input goes into it amazing um, and on, on canvas or board or canvas canvas and um, they're, they're I've quite, seen your work um, I've, I haven't actually seen it in person so a lot of these right. questions hopefully everyone else is finding interesting but I'm like fascinated I'm like I need to delve into this to find out myself on yes. canvas okay brilliant yeah. brilliant thank you <laughs> I'm sure so many other questions are going to pop up halfway after we've finished our conversation so I might well be back, I could back in touch again um thank Agnes you. go lovely um let's move on to your sort of inspiration processes practice um do share please mm -hmm. So my inspiration, and thank you for sharing yours. I, I really love hearing about other artists and you're an observer like me. So for me, I take myself out, out of the house, out of the studio, and I spend a lot of time in nature. So my key inspiration now is water. But my journey of photography started when I was a, a, a teenager, I was around 12 and we had photography everywhere. My dad was into it, he had his dark room and all the equipment, so the whole family, my sisters, my, um, my younger sister is also a photographer, so we were surrounded by it oh, out in nature and it's very much the case for me now as well. The theme kept changing throughout my life. So I started with trees, I was obsessed with trees, then it moved to like loving people and photographing people, uh, doing some travel documentaries as well, um, photographing dancers when I hit Argentina and discovered tango. <laughs> but now it's water. And frequently when people look at my artwork now, they're, they're like, what is it really? Is it's a painting or what because it's so abstract in nature and I like working with, with water so that you actually can't tell that it's water I come really close sometimes I gain the water itself so that that's my medium photography nature and that's my forever an inspiration yeah. um, and I think the journey will continue because I see like how I'm like just shifting from like looking at water just on the surface value and some of you who are familiar with my work like I, I also treat this element with reverence and respect on a spiritual level so that aspect is very close to my heart when I create yeah. and my whole process is about spending time with the elements so I don't just turn up a location go in and out I take my time uh, yeah. and I sometimes return to the same location year on year and, and discover differences as well and I like playing with that as, as well yeah. so yeah definitely like with observing <laughs> and my my model the water is forever changing I assume well humans also change all the time but I know that I have to be like really quick be observant but also like quick because the light changes all the time and and the water and the environment um where the water is changes as well and you'd yeah. be surprised how like year after year I would go to a location for example there's one in Dordogne central France and you go to the same beautiful sacred spring and it, it's completely changed yeah. from one year to the next year you, you are photographing a different entity different being yeah. different consciousness so the cycle the cycle yeah. of, of the uh, life of it as well so, the one thing I just um it feels from listening that even from like the the dancing from the sort of engagement with the physicality of the people then through to the the, the water and it's about movement almost it's like everything is moving and you are observing that movement and observing that sort of edge of, of observation that, that that sort of that that small bit that could just be captured in that again a moment yeah. in that respect but it's it's mm -hmm. always that tangible movement that you know it's going to be changing you know it's going to be that that extra step of a dance that's going to take it in a different direction which might be the unexpected mm -hmm. and then it everything has its own natural sort of growth and cycle that you are observing and there's something really confident actually in you accepting that you, you are just taking that moment and that it is part of this bigger sort of movement of story 
it's really yeah, interesting I yeah so. i did it and, and the crossover between the two of you is, is really fascinating it. actually <laughs> sorry <laughs> carry on it was just yeah i just felt i needed to share I that my observation but i feel like you know art is about the artist and the observer and the audience and like your input is like super valuable and i really see myself like flowing with it and it's either me in movement reaching my source of inspiration and then i need to be in stillness to really absorb the movement that is coming towards me. Yeah. So yeah, definitely, I'm very much in interested in the arts of flow, um, yeah. conceptually and visually as well. And I and I forever explore that um, in my early days as well. I just love traveling, love being on the go, manifested the life that is very much about that, yeah. you know, just being open to the forever changing flow of life. Yeah. And I also like you have mentioned like the Viv's got that as well. I love how you got this to, together as well because apart from photography, I also draw now. So I like that you kind of try to put it that it actually makes sense as well. So that is my new flow, like like a baby <laughs> little flow that is germinating here. I like thanks to a very good friend of mine. Uh, who is also an artist, I started to take courage to draw again and uh, draw and share and not just yeah. like share a little bit, but this exhibit as well, which this is what art fan is great for, I, I believe, you know, just taking us out of the box. And I see that I have, I have put myself out there to explore different mediums. Yeah. And that did me a lot of good. And I like the fact that you actually as well give different themes. I've got another organization I'm part of as well. It's amazing, like just to give that opportunity for an artist to like just see, okay, the other practices, what can we create based on what we already have, um, yeah. all the strengths, and that is good. I like to be challenged mm. and I think my I'm so proud and thank you so much for these opportunities for like taking us like my work and that is like the biggest vision and dream of mine was to go to New Zealand but thanks to our work and my work made it to New Zealand before <laughs> me so I've got no excuse I've got to be there as well I have to make it there and put, work with the waters there and also super grateful for the amazing exhibition of the power of pencil, like my first early, you know, drawings made it to that one. And I'm just so delighted and thank you. <laughs> thank you for the connection with Viv that we've got, you know, at least one thing in common here. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you both so much for sharing that. Um, and actually, I'm, just, I'm not sure, uh, either of you in home at the moment, the exhibition in Brixton? Viv? Yes, Viv. Yes, I am. Yes, um, I've got a, a piece called Muse, yeah. uh, which is a, a nice soulful looking lady. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, with some in, uh, interesting um, colours in it. <laughs> I can I can visualise it when I was there on um, Tuesday evening. It's it's a it's an amazing exhibition. Every single piece, and I just can't believe the response that it's had. And it's such a great location as well. So I have got a feeling we might be back in that particular. Um, sort of pop-up gallery space because it's just yeah it's a blank canvas you can then mold it and ad adapt it and make it sort of the any space that you like so you're currently in an art can exhibition you already mentioned a couple Ignacia of yours that you you're in as well and also that the fact they gave you an opportunity to explore a separate angle of your practice and I think that's something that I want to make sure art can always does that it has a diversity of programs so that if you are thinking of exploring something there might be the opportunity of once you've done that to actually get it out there because otherwise when's the opportunity other than sharing it on social media which might mean that all your loyal and lovely followers just like it and you're like oh that was okay but you don't then sort of get the the bigger sort of achievement or sort of fact that feels like it's the next step forward because you've exhibited it more publicly so um yeah it's brilliant and so what, what other other than that can what else is coming up for you both and um, Viv let's start with you you're moving um, studio I, or have you moved studio or are you about to move studio or are you um, hunting a place I'm in, in the process um uh, between studios I suppose is the way to describe it at the moment yeah <laughs> um so 
the the next big thing I've got coming up is going to be um, with Flux exhibition in London. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. In December. Yeah. So that's fantastic. Um, this time it's uh, on Piccadilly. Yeah. Um, so Amazing. really looking forward to that. I've got um, one painting that really needs finishing so that it'll be dry in time. So I must get on with that this weekend. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's my plan for the weekend, um, and it will um, close the kind of the sort of cycle of um, uh, paintings that I've been working from for more, for a while. Um, uh, sorry, going back to the process again. I don't, uh, was that um, I tend to work from images from the same source for oh, yeah. as, to make a, to make a sequence. Um, so this one will probably be the final one from this particular source images and then do you then find how do you discover a new source or is it a bit like just going with the flow or something will then just suddenly pop up and you're like oh okay this has got and is it is it color led or is it physicality led or I mean, oh come on come on, come on tell more <laughs> Um, it, well, uh, going with the flow is definitely part of it, yes. Um, I've, I find um, images to paint from have to be from something that I've watched several times, either a drama or a film, um, so it has some emotional resonance. Um, yeah. when, I, when I'm doing drawings, I'll do, I'll do uh, drawings from basically anything that's on the telly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, to, to make a painting, it needs to be something. It, and uh, I, I pick out a moment that's got um, emotional resonance to it. So yeah. it's uh, either before or immediately after something dramatic happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, oh. and, then and then talking about the the colour, the pal the palette will um, change depending on what the. Uh, what the source material is so for the, for this one the what including the one that's in home um there's quite a lot of sorts of purples and mauves and lilacs yes. and things in it which is was uh was there in the source material i, I enhance it but uh, it was definitely there so yeah brilliant i love it so well good luck with your weekend of painting you of painting you won't need luck it will just be a really gorgeous moment i'm a bit a little bit envious a little bit envious um agnes good lovely what are you up to at the moment and what's your what's next on your horizon um so i've been flowing throughout the year with with the arts and i've managed to well one of my dreams came true <laughs> I exhibited with the other art fair um, curated by Sachi, and this brought me quite a few connections and invitations. So one of the invitations ha has been by this um, art group in um, in America, in LA. Yeah. So I've just come back from, from there as well, and by being virtually in the midst of the woods, photographing water, I met um, a group of uh, LA based women filmmakers who were doing a documentary on water. So at the back of that, I've got another call up that already happened and, and more to come. And I would like to apply um, for the, the other art fair edition in LA as well. Yeah. I don't normally like talking about plants. I like doing yeah. things and then sharing yeah. what I've done. Yeah, so yeah, I'm like yeah. very shy. Well, no, but sometimes you can, you can project yeah. it out there without there being any yeah any expectation or and also with the total understanding that things absolutely change and you will just go with the flow because totally. <laughs> i trust that, that flow is is going to happen but i'm hearing the calling so it's been like three and the, the free call out is good enough number to kind of notice yeah. okay and i've got people who are also this was actually an amazing ex experience it's, as we know that we, there were a lot of art panels at the other art fair as well. Yeah. So I made loads of connections that many people want to apply to the edition in America. So I feel like this is where I'm being drawn to. Yeah. And also at the back of art and exhibition in Paris, this ensemble, which was delightful as well. I applied for Home Palais. So I'm waiting for the reply from that. That would be a biggie. Yeah. <laughs> So 
I look forward to that. And I've got one secured, which is with my other organization here. I'll have an exhibition, a group exhibition in December with um, um, Polish associations of artists in the UK. Love but it. one other thing that is growing and that has always been at the back of my mind is the moving image. Like water really then, like it looks amazing when it's moving. And I've just had the water, the spiritual side of my work. I did the water ceremony ceremony in Glastonbury with a very dear friend of mine who works, works with water as well on an energetic level. And it was the first opportunity for all my moving image installations to be shown in a big space. Wow. I love that. I want more of that. So I'm sending it out there. At <laughs> yeah, use this as a platform to, to materialize that like, little seed. I'm yeah. here. So these are my little visions. And let's see, ask me next year what happened. <laughs> but okay. sending the feedback. Well, maybe this time in October next year, we'll all three of us regroup and see where we're at yeah that'll be nice um okay well then it is actually time for your curveball questions for me viv let's start with you please love um it's not so much a question just what your observations are about ai my instagram feed is just constantly ai at the minute what do you think we can we can we have to look forward to with uh, with that I haven't explored it enough myself. Um, I've read quite a bit on it and I've read other people's sort of opinions on it and it's not going to go away. And I think we can have some fun with it. And I think we need to see it as something that we can have some fun with as opposed to it being something that is um, a, a, not a conflict or a challenge or anything like that. I think as soon as you start thinking it's going to actually have a negative sort of impact on your own sort of practice or process or in, you know how you are actually working then it, it could become something that becomes quite a dominant sort of force in that respect but i don't think it necessarily mm -hmm. needs to and i do i mean i've seen so many ai created imagery where it's been told to do something and it creates it and you just it's just funny <laughs> you're like that's really not going to actually replace the fact of the skill of someone who can do that by hand and so i think the the expectation of it taking control and actually being better than everything else versus the actual reality that it is i mean it will obviously develop and grow as everything does it's a bit like the first online exhibition spaces when the pandemic hit were really clunky and did not work and then very rapidly they they figured out what they needed to do right so it's always going to be that process but um i think we as humans have to develop and grow but we have to make sure that everything that we do develop and grow is actually in complement to society and life and who we are as humans and how we are exploring the big crazy world and wider world that we are in and I think we need to make sure that we're being generous in letting things develop and grow and new inventions to happen. But we do have to be realistic about it as well and make sure that the humanity of who we are is looked after and nurtured as the first first point of call and the first step. Um, but like I say, I'm, I'm still feeling my way through that sort of whole process. And this is purely on like readings and things I've seen and where I'm at, but it's, um, it's an interesting one. It really is. Did that kind of answer the observation question? Oh, yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> it's a bit like, like NFTs when they first happened, everyone was like, oh my God, this is weird and crazy. And actually now it's all sort of dipped down again and actually they are kind of out of favour and I think it could be very similar with the AI to be, you know, it's like what what actually would you want to use it for as opposed to it being, oh, ta-da, look how clever we are, we've made someone, you know, made something do this. And it's like, what actually is that purpose? And if we can find a purpose for it, which is actually generous and brilliant for what humanity and how we're growing, then I'm all for that, to be honest. Um, and if there isn't, a purpose for it then i think people will get bored quite quickly and then it'll be something else that pops up yes. so what watch this space what? with it i think <laughs> i think so yeah 
I, I agree. I, I think part of it is, it, it just reminds me of, of the arguments of seeing textbooks about, oh, we have photography now, so we don't need painting anymore. I mean, well, that didn't happen, so. <laughs> exactly, yeah, and I, you totally summed it up, and I think that's it. It's like you use it to then enhance an addition as opposed to it being a takeover. Yeah. So, um, yes. yeah, watch this space then. Well, oh, that was nice, like that, thank you. <laughs> Agnieszka, your question, please, for me. I've got a question that's got two parts, and it's all about art camp. I would like, if you don't mind, to share with us um, like your biggest success to do with the organization, but maybe something that is not noticeable for us, something that is like you cherish it in your heart, something that you are so proud of. So that's the first part, what you've achieved, funding and creating and directing it, what is something that you cherish as like one of the top successes. Um, and then the second one, if you could just like w dream wild, where do you see art camp in 10 years time? If there were no limits, where do you want to take it? Oh my word. Okay. <laughs> this is when sometimes you, you sh it shouldn't be a curveball question. You should have some prep time for this because, <laughs> um, <laughs> biggest success personally or inside my own heart i think, think these actually bleed together these questions so the reason i think art can has been so successful is because it's grown organically i haven't given that give i'm, I'm like both of you sort of go with the flow in how I take a moment, decide on that and then sort of move it forward, but make sure it's part of something that's part of a bigger picture. And I will always be so proud of the fact that ArtCan has got to its 10 year and it's beginning to be recognized outside of the art community that we're in. It's beginning to have a bigger story and conversation within society. And that has happened because I have let it have its own identity and development as opposed to it being, it's, it's never been the Kate Enters show. And I made that quite a clear distinction very early on that this was about the art, it was about the artist, it was about what we were doing, it was about that as its identity and energy in society. And I am very proud of myself for trusting that and letting it be so that it actually got to where it's got to today. And I think that is quite an abstract kind of process and concept and probably quite difficult to really sort of sum up, but that essentially is, is what I am most proud of personally, because look, look what happened just because I trusted that and let it happen. And my, I've always, I should, people always say, what's your gut say? And there are times my gut goes, ah, no, 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 no. And other times it's like, yeah, my gut's good. Let's go. <laughs> and I just think I'm, yeah, I am very, very proud that I trusted that process and I knew that it would get to where it need, needed to get to. And it is beginning to show that sort of dividend and recognition that it so deserves. Um, I say this to artists too, because I think it might take longer, but if you do it truly and genuinely and honestly, it will be better. You know, it's like, and it will get you, get you there in the end, in whatever form that is, but you've got to trust that process and never, I mean, I never compared ArtCan to any, any other or arts organization because I knew it was different and I knew it had its own identity and I knew as soon as I started to try and mould it so that we're doing things a bit like so-and-so or like this or like, then it would just suddenly lose that sort of nub of uniqueness that actually has meant that people are invested in it because they know it's something that they actually own or if they're a member, it's like they it's theirs. So, um, yeah, that's that. <laughs> Does that answer it well? Yes. Okay, but the so then, then going on to the... <laughs> where do i want it to be in 10 years is that i'm a bit like you i don't like projecting it's going to be this because again i don't want to lose that organic process i don't want to lose as debbie's just written lovely thank you um 
that sort of trust and generosity of what it's growing and how it's building. Um, what I would love is it to be just running concurrently to a lot of the other sort of larger art world organizations. So, and we are recognized as actually doing something as valuable as important within society that it's not then seen that um, it's like a community group in the way that some community groups are sort of looked like. I don't, and we don't have that identity now, so I can't expect it to be that then, but I just think there's a huge opportunity for some of the bigger arts organizations and institutions actually, who are doing amazing things in society to actually partner and collaborate with something like Art Can and then it, imagine the ripple effect of that sort of power and energy that could then grow sort of even more. All this said and done though, it will mean that the trustees have got quite a job on their hands to make sure that we've got a really strong financial structure and strategy in place behind the scenes so that I'm not juggling all of the, I, I don't think I'd be able to juggle art can in 10 years with the fact I have a full-time day job. <laughs> it's like that, that that's something's going to have to change there for this to actually get to where it needs to get to. But the trustees are well aware of that. So we have our mission and um, that's also going to be a really exciting journey to go along as well. So yeah, watch this Thank you. place, watch this space again, actually, because it will be organic, it will grow, it will always have artists at the centre of it and just see what that artists have actually managed to achieve with what Art Can is today. It's going to be really exciting. Uh, it is already exciting and I, I really love, I just wanted to end my question with just recognition. Like I was blown away by one of your events. For me it's like the seed of what artists deserve to experience. Uh, I'm talking about um, from Art and With mm. Love, the yeah. buzz and like, it was just unbelievable. Like people loving the artwork and buying it and like really fighting over it and getting it like hotcakes. For me, it's like the essence yeah. of your organization. Well, and I, yeah. Um, the accessibility of artists and um and art is really important and i think that um deb's bless you so yes you can support art can's future by becoming a friend of art can for just 30 pounds a year yeah <laughs> go to art can org and profile for details so basically everybody needs to find 10 people to be a friend of art can and imagine that ripple effect as well and then we might actually get there before the end of the next 10 years who knows um but yes, the, from Art Come With Love, I think absolutely sums up that people want access to amazing contemporary artists, but they don't necessarily know how to go about that. Mm -hmm. And everything that Art Can does means that it's accessible because we do things in different places. It is pop up. So it feels like you can cross over that threshold to come in and explore and to find out. You can invite your collectors to something because you happen to be exhibiting instead of waiting for a gallery to give you that opportunity to exhibit. You can sort of own that whole sort of process yourself, which means that it is accessible. It means that people are, I mean, everybody loves an artist. They're like, oh my God, you're, a, you're an artist. And it's like, we need to use that more. We're, we need to have more confidence in the fact that people really genuinely love artists and art and being immersed by something that gives them an emotive response it's a visual language it's it's just yeah it's i just you could get me on this for ages but i think it's so so vital in today's society that we we as artists are maintaining and offering all of that accessibility to something which is a visual language so um yeah i think from art covered love absolutely is our energy as well and it just it, it it always inspires me to keep going with it all as well so it's it's brilliant mm -hmm. i love, love it thank you so much thank you for your answer sorry for putting you on the spot i know no but i like, yeah, i quite like it because it always then brings something else out which means that i am then extra energized and this is this is why i personally love these chats mm -hmm. on a on a Saturday at the end of each month as well so Thank you both so much for joining me. Um, I'm going to be, someone asked earlier on if it's recorded, I'll be posting this on my own feed and I'll tag obviously Agnieszka and Viv so that we, you can follow them and find out more about their work and 
keep that ripple effect going basically so um have amazing weekends everybody thank you again both of you for joining thank me you so much. this was thank really you. lovely and we'll see you again really soon and um good luck with everything you're doing yeah. and <laughs> happy belated birthday oh thank yeah. you so much yeah birthday week i'm gonna continue these celebrations and yeah you yeah should. no more I will. I will. <laughs> thank you so much. take care you. everyone thank yeah. you so bye much bye, bye. bye.